Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Solar Radiation, Global Warming, and Human Disease. I'm going to talk about one of the subjects of that book, and that is plant growth defects. And this is a follow-up from an experiment that I did. So these three plants, they're all Diphambachia plants. And they used to look like this one. This is what they look like when you buy them. And as you can see, it has very large leaves typically the size of a hand. And this one has died. And these two look quite similar. So let's see what these were grown under. So each one of these was grown under a different type of light source. So this was the LED light. And this one over here was the CFL light. And they look quite similar. So as you can see, they've certainly deformed from what they came into the house looking like. But this one has actually died. And this one was the high pressure sodium light. And it's one of the things that I've noticed with high pressure sodium lights. And sodium lights in general is that there appears to be something very weird going on with the emissions out of sodium lights. And yeah, I'm not quite sure what it is, but all my experiments regarding and research regarding sodium lights saying that they may actually be quite toxic and this plant is confirming my observations so I wasn't too surprised to see that the plant that actually died was the one that was grown under sodium lighting. And you're probably wondering you know, why has it taken so long for this plant to die? Well, there's a funny thing about radiation exposures, and it's called delayed radiation symptoms. They typically show up between six months and many, many years after the exposure occurred. So it didn't really surprise me to see that this has taken almost a year to actually die from the initial exposure. So obviously I'm gonna to have to repeat this experiment, but it's certainly at this point as a red flag, which is, matching other research that I've done, which says there's something very weird going on around sodium lighting products. And it's something that interacts with the biological system. And people have reported this as streetlight interference. People have said that they've noticed that when they walk up to sodium streetlights, that they turn off and then they walk away from them and they turn back on. So it's a, it's a reported effect you can actually buy a book on it, so you should uh, search that streetlight interference. So this may actually tie in to that effect that has been noticed. But yeah, I'm glad I don't live near sodium lights because, as I say, I do think there may be something biologically unnatural going on around sodium lighting products. So. I've pulled out some of my controls. I just want to talk about my controls a little bit. The controls are actually uh, looking better than the actual experiment plants. The plants involved with the experiment, they deformed somewhat more than my controls. And it took me the longest time to figure out that I was actually growing my controls very, very close to this little device. This is an outdoor weather station. And my controls where I chose to grow them in the house they were very close to this device. And this was before I realized that many wireless radiation producing products are actually quite toxic. And the wireless industry would prefer that you didn't understand that. There's a few books written on the subject and uh, you should search them out. I'll post the names of those books in with this video so you can find out the latest information. But yeah, this is a pulsing wireless temperature and humidity sensor. You know, basically when you buy an indoor and outdoor thermometer, well, this is the outdoor thermometer. So you bolt this onto the outside of your house and your little indoor thermometer tells you what the outside temperature was by reading this device. And this device just pulses constantly. So it's, it's akin to a smart meter or a AMR meter. And there's a lot of people getting sick around smart meters and AMR meters. You should just search smart meter sickness and uh, you'll find there's thousands and thousands of people reporting sickness around smart meters and AMR meters. So uh, yeah, 
I found that my control plants being near to this device were actually getting quite sick as well. So it kind of confirms what people are reporting that the smart meters and AMR meters are damaging the health because it certainly was damaging these plants. But the, the bottom line is the control plants actually look better than the experiment plants. So the final conclusion of this experiment was that, yeah, all three plants ended up showing some level of damage, but the one that died was the streetlight plant. So it's an important thing to remember when you're doing these radiation experiments that you actually keep the plants growing for a few years after the experiment and monitor them for delayed radiation symptoms because that appears to be what happened in this case. So I'm gonna have to do some more work on sodium lights, but for now I do regard them as probably something that you want to be concerned about and you, you probably want to keep your distance from them until more is known about the biological toxicity of sodium lighting products. If you want to know more about this subject, you'll find it in my book, Solar Radiation, Global Warming and Human Disease. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.